بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد الحمد لله الحمد لله for this Mubarak time and being in this Mubarak month and being able to be uh, in a time in which uh, the doors of, of mercy, the doors of Tahara, of purification, are upon us and amongst us and uh, are with us. And Alhamdulillah that Allah has chosen you all to be of those who uh, are seeking Him in this time and seclusion in the masjid, uh, in your itikaf. And inshallah, may your intentions be uh, sincere. May your intentions be, you know, with that for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with. And may you find that for which you're seeking, inshallah. Uh, this is a very uh, important time. The, the Quran tells us uh, where Allah subhanahu wa says, Ashar al Ramadan, Aladi Unzila Fihi al Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa talks about the fact that the month of Ramadan, and, and one of the scholars, he said that it's very interesting that Allah subhanahu wa said, Shara Ramadan, because Allah could have just said Ramadan. Everybody knows Ramadan. We know what Allah was talking about if he just said Ramadan, but he said Shara Ramadan. And in and, and doing so, trying to uh, emphasize the importance, right? Uh, it's, it's a, uh, for those who are grammar students, you know, this is what we call uh, Ta'adheen. Right? Uh, and Allah is magnifying the month. He's glorifying this month. He's, he's magnifying its intensity, uh, its uh, importance by saying Shah Ramadan. And, you know, and, and that the Quran was revealed during the month of Ramadan. But it's also interesting, as the scholars say, that Allah would reveal the Quran during the time in which we're fasting. Right, where he's also commanded us to fast, and in that, uh, the way that it was it was explained is that during this month when we're fasting, that there are spiritual doors that become opened in the self, right, and for the Quran to be revealed at the time in which uh, people are fasting or, or, or that spiritual door is open means that there is an aspect of the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa wants us to receive. It's that, that ghayb, that secret of the Quran, that, the, that unknown aspect of the Quran that we seem to miss because when we normally read the Quran, we're reading just words. Many of us are not really looking for meaning. Many of us read them and read it and read it, and some of us get really excited because we can read flowingly or we read beautifully, or you know we have these great intonations and we can have these long meds and all these beautiful things in our recitation, and so you know we get excited about that. But many of us don't necessarily read for understanding, right? So when we start reading for understanding, and then you know whether I don't you know whether you read it in Arabic and then you read it in your native language, whether it be English or Punjabi or Urdu or Spanish or French or whatever the case may be, then you begin to read it. Then you get a little idea of what you just read, alhamdulillah. But the reality is, Allah says in the Quran that there are signs for those who contemplate. During this time of fasting, when the, the spiritual door of self has been opened up, this is the time of reflection. Right? This is the time of reflection for self. Other traditions, as Allah says, uh, that uh, fasting has been what written for you as it was written for those who came before you. In other words, there are other traditions that fasting has been given to, and they, even they look at the fast as a way of opening the self. Right? If you ask the Buddhists when they go into their meditation, if they really want to be intense within their meditation, what do they do? They fast. 
You know, some of you may be familiar with some of the Hindu traditions. They do the same thing. They fast in order to get, as they call it, spiritual enlightenment. It is, it is made up of two things, fasting and meditation. Meditation is what? Contemplation. So we have it within our own traditions. Meditation and we fast. To do what? To receive what? Spiritual insight. To be removed from the state that we're in of desires. To be removed from our desires to... Uh, for whatever, whether it be status or whether it be, uh, uh, you know, fame or whether it be fortune or whatever the case may be. Whatever it is you're looking for in this world that, you're, that your heart and your person has become attached to, the fast is supposed to remove us from those attachments. Right? And as Abdul Qadr al-Jalani, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that the complete fast is not just the fast of the body, you know, giving up food and drink is also the fast of the heart in which the heart removes itself from those things that are disharmonious to the self. So that means you're going to remove yourself from looking at things and listening to things that are that will cause disharmony in one's person, whatever that may be. Watching the tongue and everything. You know, even when it comes to making simple jokes. I mean, sometimes we like to make fun of our mates and you know, say a f funny thing or two, and you know, because it's funny and everybody gets a good laugh. But the reality is sometimes even that the laugh at the expense of someone else could really be hurting that person. Even though they may be laughing with you, they're still in their mind sometimes it, it kind of lingers. And so we want to make sure that, our, that people are safe from our tongues. People are safe from, you know, us being suspicious about them. They're safe from us being... Uh, uh, slandering them or saying things that we, that we would not like them to say about us or anybody else for that matter. And this is a fast that continues. It's not something that, you know, when we break the fast from food, the heart is still fasting. It's still trying to remove itself and stay away from those things that are disharmonious to the human being, to your state of being. Right? So again, when the heart is involved, and you're, you're taking the time, and I'm hoping specifically with you all, because you're making your itikaf, that you're taking the time to really look at you, right? You're taking a journey into self. You're exploring you. It's not just about, okay, I'm going to be here. I'm going to finish the Quran. No, 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 no. Don't worry about finishing the Quran. Try to reflect on the Quran. Spend this time in reflection. That's what itikaf is. It's a time of reflection. Now, I mean, I'm, I mean, if you've made your goals, fulfill your goals. I don't want to take you off your plan. But let's just add a little something to it, right? And start looking at how do I take what I'm reading and how does it apply to me, right? They used to say about uh, Junaid, may Allah be pleased with him, when he first left uh, his family, because he used to be a sheep herder when he was young and he got tired of grazing sheep. And told his uh, family he wanted to study, but his family was like, that's ridiculous. This is what you're going to do. This is your life. You're going to be a sheep herder. That's that. Eventually, he just left the sheep. Right? He left, and he went to go study. And he used to live. He didn't have a place. He didn't have money. And he used to live in a little cave just off the shores of the ocean. And what he would do is he would go and listen uh, to the, 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 the gatherings of, of knowledge in the masjid. And one of the imams... Uh, used to have a hadith class in the masjid. And so he would go and he would listen to one hadith. And if he heard that one hadith, he'd go back and to the cave that he was staying in and he would sit there and he would contemplate that hadith and really look at that hadith from all different types of angles to the point where he was able to add that hadith to his life. Where the hadith became a part of him. And so from there, he was able to uh, speak about that hadith, but not just speak about it from what he read and looking at the tafsirs or the commentaries on the, on the different hadith. He was speaking from a point of view of experience. He was speaking from the point of view of a, of a reality that could only be found by the application of that hadith by the adding that hadith to the very being of the individual. 
That's a different type of commentary. That's a different type of speech. That's a different type of understanding. We call it, we like to say that it's called haqiqah. Meaning that we understand that what a reality of that hadith. Or a reality of, of what's necessary the hadith. Because the hadith is telling us about life. It's telling us about living. And that's what we're, under, what we're trying to become. People that are living. This deen is, when we say deen, meaning way of life, well, it means how we're living. And our life and the way that we're living should be one big action, action of devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, our fiqh at the end of the day is there to help us to understand how to perfect our acts of devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we should be in devotion and in thanks and in hamd for the things that we've been given. I mean, you should be thanking Allah that He allowed you to be of, you know, those who are making itikaf. Because, I mean, how many people aren't? Or how many people can't? But Allah has given you this opportunity to be in the masjid, to spend the time to learn more about you in relationship to Him. And in that, and even as you're, inshallah, exploring you and exploring that secret that is you, exploring that heart and exploring the soul, there comes a point where you understand that it's not you that you're really seeking, but you're seeking Allah through you, if you understand what I mean. Because you are creation. He is the creator. And as you look and see yourself, all you should see at the end of the day is creation. Creation that is what dependent, by definition, is dependent. But dependent upon what? Not food, not drink, because we're going without that right now. So we're, we can see that we're living without food and drink. I mean, we can't do it every day for long as we do need to, to supplement the body needs it at some point. But the point is, is that it is dependent. But what are we truly dependent upon? Even for the food and the drink, we're dependent upon Allah. As one of the scholars was saying about the sort of Laylat al Qadr, where Allah SWT began saying, Inna anzanahu fi Laylat al Qadr. In this first part, he was saying, Inna, that na, that we have sent, verily we, who is we? Allah. Again, ta'deen. Allah is magnifying himself. Inna, we, meaning I sent the Qur'an. Well, first of all, he didn't say Qur'an. He said, Inzalna hu. Where is hu? Usually for those of us who study grammar, we know that the domir, the, the pronoun, goes back to something that came a couple of lines ago. Right? Because we're talking about the Qur'an. But we understand that we're talking about the Qur'an here because, as one scholar put it, it's showing that the Qur'an is something of the ghayb. It's unknown. Right? Because if you said Quran, now it became specific. But now we're saying, who? Who is what? Who is what? Who is who? Right? It's kind of the ghayb, the unknown. But we understand it to mean the Quran. So what he meant was, one of the scholars explained it, he said that when we say that it's from the ghayb, the unknown, meaning that the Quran has multiple understandings or meanings. Again, that has to be found by what? By way of contemplation. So you're given the meaning, we read it, we're given something in the Qur'an by the way of our language to help us understand what the Arabic is saying, even though we all understand that even the language that has been translated into can still not capture the true essence of what the Qur'an is saying to us. So that alone tells us that there's more that has to be explored. Right? He says, but at the same time, Allah puts the, the Dhamma over the who, right? Rafa, meaning to raise, to, to be high, right? Fi Laylatul Qadr, Laylatul Qadr, the night that it was revealed, right? What is broken, right? The Kasra, Kasra means Kasra from Kasra means what in Arabic? Broken. 
So this word, so the Laylat al-Qadr is broken, meaning it's below the who. The who is the Qur'an. The Laylat al-Qadr is subservient to what? The Qur'an, which is a little bit higher. But both are what? Subservient to who? In na, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And that later to the Qadr, he says with the, that the Malaika, right, that ask for permission. Right? They, they're, they're, they, they go out from the permission of their Lord, as one of the scholars mentioned. He said that in this, that, you know, we read it one way, but another possible meaning is that the angels realize the amount of blessings and barakah that are being spread out during Laylat and Qadr that they want to be a part of receiving some of the blessings. So they ask for permission from Allah so that they can be a part of the blessings that He is disseminating on the earth. So again, they're looking for, they're subservient to what? Layla to Qadr. They're looking for Layla to Qadr because they want to receive the blessings from Allah. But what does that ultimately mean? It means that all the angels, the, the Layla to Qadr, the Quran are all returning to Allah. So later to Qadr, we're not looking for the night of power, folks. We're looking for Allah. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for Allah. That's the point. That's the point of our existence, is to see and to, to find our Lord. The Quran helps us understand creator from creation and creation from the creator. And to help us understand and remind, help us to remind ourselves that we are in need of Him. He doesn't need us. Qulhu Allahu ad, Allahu as Everything is in need of Him, but yet He's in need of nothing. Right? So during this, these days, these last days, we're searching for Allah. As you explore your heart and you explore your soul, you explore you, looking at you, just even just from a basic standpoint, understanding where am I in my life? Where am I in terms of helping the community? Am I helping or am I an obstacle? Am I someone that is opening the doors so that mankind can benefit or am I just a leech? leeching off the resources and all the other things that come along with living in where it is I live and doing what it is I do? Am I giving anything back? Am I, am I part of the problem or am I part of the solution? Am I, uh, if I'm married, am I, am I doing things to enhance my marriage or am I doing things to cause my marriage to be worse? Am I doing something in my home to bring about goodness for my family, my parents, and my uncles, and my sisters, and brothers? Or am I just causing more problems? Where am I? Who am I? In relationship to the greater things that are going on. Where's my heart? Where's my connection to Allah? Am I fasting with my heart? Am I making salat with my heart? Abdul Qadr al-Jalani, may Allah be pleased, and also talked about that in terms of the salah. When we make the takbir to ihram, is the heart making takbir? When we're making ruku'ah, is the heart making ruku'ah? When we're reciting fatiha, is the heart reciting fatiha? When we're saj sajda, does the heart make sujood? When does it bow itself to Allah? When do we pray and have that complete salat? Where all of us is involved in the prayer. You know, we talk, it's hard enough, honestly, and trust me, what I'm saying is easier said than done. I mean, it's hard enough to have maintain hudur, to have presence in the prayer, to keep focus, to always pray in the presence, knowing that you're in the presence of Allah, knowing that Allah is watching you, what you're doing. We have a hard enough time outside of prayer, let alone in prayer, trying to maintain the presence of Allah. This is what we call taqwa, God consciousness. I don't call taqwa God fearingness. I don't like that. Taqwa is God consciousness. Being aware that Allah is present with everything that we do by way of His knowledge. That Allah, there's nothing that we can do, nothing we're going to do that Allah doesn't already know we're going to do and knew that we were going to do it before we knew we were going to do it. So we have to be God conscious, you know, at all times, but at least in our prayer, we really have to hone it in. 
and have that presence. But does the heart also have that presence? Is the question. So we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. The, the poet, he said, Al-Eid laysa liman yalbasu jadeed. Al-Eid liman ta'atuhu yazid. Which means that the Eid is not for the person that wears new clothes. Right? Because many of us, and there was an article in the United States about Eid. And one of the girls, Muslim girls, she was saying, yes, the Eid, we can't wait for it because we can eat again and we can drink and we can do this, we can do that. And we're going to buy new clothes and we're going to go and we'll pray together and we'll eat together sometimes. And then we go to people's houses and everybody gets to see my new outfits and these kind of things. Okay. But if you spent all this time trying to develop yourself spiritually, if you spent the time reading the Quran, contemplating the Quran, contemplating how you know this, the eye is applied to you, looking at maybe why it was revealed, looking at you know the different times, what was happening during the time the ayah was revealed. I mean, if you want to go that deep, if you can go that deep, do so. But if you're just sitting, just reading, just thinking, just read a little bit, put it down, and you know, Allah just said this about the people who don't believe, or Allah said this in Baqarah, that, you know, anyone, you know, after they've been, after they received the guidance from Allah, they turn on their heels and to follow the way of the Jews and Christians won't find any help. Now, what does that mean? Hmm, what does that mean for me? You know, you're just that basic, and you're just thinking about it and going over it and then asking yourself other questions and then looking into yourself. And, you know, you have Sheikh Harun here, you have the Imam here, you have both these beautiful brothers here. So you got people you can ask questions to and others that I don't know. You have people you can ask questions to and get some insight to hear a few things that they have to say and then go back and contemplate those words and see how that fits and how that applies to you. If you spend your time doing these things, you spent your time trying to improve your character, you spent your time trying to do, you know, develop yourself, but then after all of that said and done, you, you, in the back of your mind you say, well, I can't wait till these 10 days are over so I can hurry up and get to the shop so I can go and buy or go down on the street where, you know, all the, all the, 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 the Muslim clothing stores are so you can buy yourself a new fold. You know, can't wait to get to the barber so you can get the, the beard trimmed up. You know, so you can get, you know, the new kufi. You had your eye on those new shoes. You know, and now you get all these different things. You know, I, I went to the tailor, had a new jubba made, and, you know, I got my material for the new turban. I can't wait to rock my new amama. You know, or, you know, I got some cool for my eyes, or, you know, whatever it is. I got the new ring, or new cane. I'm going to rock the cane, the Habib Omar cane. You know, whatever it is. You spend all your time working on these things, but then this is what you can't wait to do, then you've wasted your time. Because why? You're, going to end, you're basically reverting to what you were prior to the month of Ramadan even beginning. Which means there's been, there's been no change. You went through the motions, but the change, the real change, that lasting change does not exist. And I call that spiritual fraud. You can say spiritual hypocrisy if you want. I, you're a fraud. You just went through the motions just so you could look good and do this and feel pious for a moment. So you got a little bit of that. But now you come right back to being the same person you were before this whole thing even started. That's not what the Eid is for. As the poet says in the second part of the line, that the Eid is for the one that has increased themselves in worship. Because the Eid is a celebration of worship. That's what we're celebrating. We're not celebrating the fact that, oh, we went 30 days, 29 days without food and drink. Allah Akbar. I can eat again. And then you go stuff yourself at the Dixie Chicken or wherever you like to go. Chemos. Right? Most of you are from Liverpool here, right? That's not what this is about. The Eid is going to be about and should be about the increase of worship 
that we've done. We're celebrating the fact that Allah blessed us to purify ourselves, to change ourselves, to learn more about ourselves, and more importantly, to find Him in our lives. We're seeking Allah. We're seeking Allah. May Allah give you Allah. Amen. We're seeking. I hope you understand what I'm saying. There's ain't no goofy Sufi stuff. I hope you understand what I'm saying to you. I truly hope you understand what I'm saying. We're searching for Allah. That reality is what we're saying. The reality of this life. What is the reality? Allah says that this life is nothing more than what? An illusion. So where's the, who, where's the reality then? Allah is the reality. Who is Al-Haq? So we're looking for Al-Haq. Right? That's what we're looking for. Through what? The means of Haqiqah. Not the surah. No, we're not looking for it by just looking good and going through ritualistic actions. No, we're looking through the point of reality through connection of our heart and our souls and our minds and our person and our actions, our characters, our words and everything, our deeds by, you know, by understanding the reality and understanding that the only reality is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the way to get there is what are the sirat al mustaqim the sunnah, the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You see, for those who realize and understand how to utilize this time that the spiritual doors that are open, that are open, and that we're going to use the Quran that was sent during a time where the spiritual doors are open for us to receive more than just the words, through our contemplation and our application of it, then we become like that of the Prophet وسلم, who was described by his wife Aisha radiallahu anha as being what? He was like a walking Quran. That's what we want. Because in other words, he lived what he read. He lived the revelation. The revelation is living. You see what I'm saying? It's not ritualistic actions. No, it's living, meaning there's connection with everything that's done. Because everything that's done is done for the sake of Allah, or within the all spaces of Allah, which is the same thing. You understand me? Are you with me? In terms of where I'm at, on the, on the, we're on the same page here. It's important. I'm on this journey too, so it's not like I've arrived. You know, I, I wasn't sitting in the room and all of a sudden, oh, it just came. It just arrived. Oh, and guess what? Now I'm going to tell everybody. No, I'm on this journey too. There's a great journey of self that has to be made. You know, many of you who aren't married, you know, you want to get married, but you know, the thing about it is you don't even know who you are. You don't even know who you are and what you really, truly have to offer someone else in your life. You really don't know what you're offering and what you're bringing this other person into because you don't even know. Well, this is a time to learn, a time to dig deep. And those who are married, it's time to dig even deeper and look at what else you can pull out so that when you leave this empty calf and you go home to your wife, you're bringing something new. You're bringing something fresh, and you're bringing something that she's like, well, what's going on? What's different? Man, that, maybe you need to do it to calf more often. <laughs> because you're bringing something new to the table. You're bringing something fresh. And you're bringing something that's lifting, because as a husband, our, our responsibility is to, to raise the ranks of the people that are under us, or we're in, we're in charge of. And when I say in charge, I mean we have a responsibility to protect. And that protection is not just a physical protection, it's a spiritual, emotional, intellectual protection. And so many of us are slack, kind of falling behind on the job. Well, now is the time to renew and refresh ourselves, change the perspective and come home with something new. 
So we're offering something to raise the ranks of the people that are in our households and around us and the people that we call our friends or mates or you know, beloved ones, Habibis and all these other things. You know. What's the term they use now? It used to be boo. Now is another word I forget. I heard it recently. I was like, what? <laughs> you know. Uh, but anyways, it doesn't matter, I guess. You understand what I'm getting at. Inshallah, let us make this a Ramadan like no other. If you haven't already made the changes, if you haven't already, you know, really put yourself out there and really try to explore yourself and explore the Quran, explore the Hadith, explore the different aspects of our of our Deen. You know, let's do it now. You only have a week, less than a week. Well, let's see. Ten days begins. So you got nine days, so you still have a week. But let's use this time wisely because it's going to go like that. And you don't want to wait until the, you know, the day before Eid and you're like, oh, I could have done this and oh, I should have done that. Start doing it now. Don't be the woulda, shoulda, coulda person. Be the person that's doing now. Seizing the time. This is a gift from Allah. This is a gift from Allah. And what will you do with the gift from Allah? You know, it's funny how when you're at your job, you get a little piece of paper, a little certificate saying of accomplishment. It really ain't worth nothing. But we'll put it on a, we'll put a frame in, we'll throw it on the wall. You have it in your little cubicle, you know, just so people can see that you accomplished something. And you're all happy about it. Allah gives you life and you do nothing with it. Allah gives you the Quran, you don't even touch it. Allah gives you hadith, you got the books, but you don't even look at them. It's just there for decoration. So you can say, look at my library. Allah has given you the month of Ramadan, and what are you doing with it? Allah has blessed you brothers to be here in itikaf. What will you do with the time? What will you do with this gift that Allah has given you? Allah has given you things to say, the dhikr, to find sadaqah and to find closeness and to open up the heart and train the heart so that it does nothing but remember Allah. But what will you do with it? Nothing. Some are the most, but you know who you are. The gifts have been given. What are you doing with the gifts? What am I doing with the gifts? And when I say you, I mean me too. I'm included in that you. What are we doing with the gifts that Allah has given us? And how much thanks do we give for the gifts that we're giving us? And thanks, yes, it can come down to just saying, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Thanks can even be saying, thank you, Allah. But a greater thanks is by taking action and utilizing what Allah has given you. You know, you would get upset if, you, if someone told you, I need a job. And then you went to great lengths to help this person get a job. They finally get a job, but did nothing with the job. They were always late. Sometimes don't even show up. And when they are there, they're not really doing the job. They're on Facebook or on Twitter or on Instagram. They're supposed to be on the computer doing something, and you catch them in there doing selfies. You get pissed. What are you doing? You begged me for a job. You told me how you couldn't eat. You were, you were stinking. Your, your clothes were dirty. Now I got you a job and you've got an income. You have the means to take care of your family if you have one. You know, and, and, but you're doing nothing with the job that I help you get. Now what the heck is going on, man? And you get upset. Alhamdulillah, Allah is not like us. Because see, we'll cut you off. In fact, we might even find a way to get that person fired. Because they're messing up your reputation. Because they're not doing the things that you thought they were going to do or what a person would do who says they're in dire need of a job. Because you would think they'd do everything in their power to make sure that they're on top and, and maintaining so they don't lose the job, but yet and still, they're just doing every, the opposite of all of that. So it's messing your reputation up. But alhamdulillah, Allah's not worried about reputation. Alhamdulillah, Allah's not worried about it. He doesn't get upset with the servants for not doing what they're supposed to do because he knew they wouldn't in the first place. 
but how happy he is when we recognize our faults, we recognize we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing, and how wonderful he feels when we turn around and turn back to him and say, Ya Allah, please forgive me for the way that I've been. Oh Allah, I want to change. And I'm trying to make the best, I'm trying to make the efforts to make the change. That's what Allah wants to see. That's what's going to make Allah happier. He's not going to get upset that we're not doing it. You just might not get something else later down the line. But the thing about it is, is that he loves it when we turn ourselves around and we recognize it. And even understanding that when we recognize it, that came from Allah. And then also when we recognize that, you know what, in this change that I'm trying to institute, I can't do this on my own. I still need Allah's permission to make the change. So Allah, please bless me to change. That's recognizing that everything that we have and that we get and the things that we do only come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not from us. If I change, if, like I said earlier, if I came home, my wife saw something new or my family saw something new, it's not because I did it, it's because Allah allowed it to happen. But I asked Allah for it. Because I, need, I recognize that I need to change. I need to be better. I need to be more than what I am right now. And that's what we should be asking Allah for right now. So that we can be the change. Spend time thinking about the obstacles that are keeping you from becoming better. Think about, you know, as, uh, as uh, one person put it, you know, you've got to look at life in terms of assets and liabilities. Look at what's a liability and look at what's an asset. For us, anything that brings us closer to Allah, obviously, is an asset. Anything that takes us away from Allah is a liability. Now you have to ask yourself, you know, how long can you maintain and keep the liabilities going? Because the liabilities cause you to become bankrupt. And nobody in here has enough baraka in their bank account of baraka that you can lose a little bit. Nobody in here has a bank account of baraka that's so full you don't need anymore. If you do, I'd like to meet you. I need to know your secret. Because I'm telling you right now, I keep, I keep taking, making withdrawals. And my bank account doesn't look so good. My account might get canceled. But alhamdulillah, Allah blesses us with ways to continuously bring in the barakah. The question is, are we going to take those ways? Are we going to use those ways? Are we going to look at those liabilities and be able to move those liabilities out of our lives and try and fill our lives with assets? And then ask yourself, am I an asset to the people around me? And if I'm not an asset, how do I become one? This is a basic thing. This is a basic talk that I'm, that I'm, I'm giving today. And I hope, you know, that you'll take what I'm saying to con into consideration and think about where you are and what you can do. You know, for those of you who are like martial arts, you know, if your basics aren't together, it doesn't matter what everything else does, if you're a boxer, whatever, your basics are what, are what you build off of. And if you don't even have the basics, then it doesn't matter how smooth you look. You know, when you stand before the masters, you know, you might be flowing with your movements and doing all this and, oh, wow, that looks great to the person who doesn't know. But the masters don't look at his basics and suck. So all the rest of us crap, uh, excuse me, it's garbage. Everything else is garbage. I can care less how smooth you look. Everything is garbage because your basics aren't there. Well, if we don't get our basics together, how do you think the master, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is going to look at us? I could care less of how how eloquent you speak. I could care less how many books you've read. I could care less how many shayukh you've sat with. I could care less how many countries you've traveled to. Care less how many, how many masters you slept in. If your basics aren't intact, brothers and sisters, whew, everything else doesn't mean anything. So work on your basics. Reclaim yourself now why you have the opportunity because you don't know we may not live to the next Ramadan you know because some of us are kind of Ramadan Muslims you know we only start really doing anything during the Ramadan the rest of the year is just whatever 
You may not live to the next Ramadan. And we hope that the changes that we, we institute now will carry us and we'll continue to act on them and build upon them. And by the next Ramadan, we should be looking to go higher. You understand? We can't stay at these levels, brothers. We cannot stay at the level we're at. We cannot. We're in a different day and age. We can't just be some average, you know, nominal Muslim. This is a time where we need to know our stuff. And when we speak, it has to be from a point of view of experience, not something I just read or heard. It's from a point of view of what I've lived. That's what we have to come from. The days of us just being nominal are done. They've been done for a while. And look at where it's getting, gotten us right now. Look at what's happening in the world because of nominal Muslims, because of lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, lack of understanding of self, lack of deeply understanding the spiritual side of ourselves and connecting to that because that's what connects us even more so to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ultimately, is our lack of connection to Allah because we weren't seeking Allah. And because of that, this is why we are in the position we are in the world right now. It's done. It's over and it should end with you, with me, right now, right here, in this time period. It's time for change. It's time for change. Let's, get, let's, let's, let's reclaim ourselves. Let's develop our relationship with Allah. May we be people of haqiqah. May Allah bless us to see Him. And you understand what I mean when I say see him? I mean like see Allah, okay? I don't want anybody running away with that one. Jamal said you can see Allah. You know, that's not what I'm saying. That we're seeking Allah SWT. And we see his essence through the, nine, the names and the, the, his attributes that he allowed us to know. May we be those people that during this Eid, inshallah, that we are celebrating, truly celebrating worship. Amen. May Allah bless us to understand the coolness of the eye of every salah. Amen. The coolness of the eye after, when we break our fast. Amen. The coolness of the eye after every smile that we offer anyone. Amen. The coolness of the eye of good treatment to our families. The, the coolness of the eye of good treatment of our neighbors. The cool, the cool eye of the treatment of the people in the greater communities. Amen. May Allah bless us to understand the coolness of the eye of worship. May increase us in our worship. May allow us to understand the realities of our worship. May He bless us to understand the secrets within our worship. May He bless us to understand the secrets of the Quran. May He bless us to, have, to be open enough and be able to receive and to live and experience the Quran. May Allah bless us to have a relationship with the Quran. May Allah bless us to be people who are people, the types that when people look upon us, they can truly see the essence of Islam. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those people that he's pleased with. Amen. May we be of those people that he's pleased with. Amen. May we be of the people that he's pleased with. Amen. May we be of the people who truly walk on the path of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah bless us to be of those people that are finding bliss and tranquility in their graves. Amen. May he bless us to be of those people who are resurrected in the best of forms. Amen. May he bless us to be of those people who walk within the shade of his throne. Amen. May he bless us to be of those people who will meet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the watering place Amen. and be able to drink from his beautiful and soft and generous hands. Amen. May he bless us to be of those people who hear him say, Idkhul jinnati min rahmati. Amen. May we be of those people who pray behind the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in safuf al-awal. May Allah bless us to enter in all doors of Jannah from which we choose. May Allah bless us to be of those people of Firdaus. May Allah bless us to be the people of Firdaus. May Allah bless us to be the people of Firdaus. May Allah allow us to be gathered again on that day when we were able to be gathered and we can sit and talk about and discuss how we increased ourselves in worship. How that day back on July, back in July during the Ramadan when, we, when Brother Jamal came and we all sat and we talked about development and change and, and understanding the secrets of ourselves and understanding and noticing and being conscious of the spiritual doors that Allah has opened up for us that we were able to take the Quran and other aspects of our life and be able to em embody them and work with them so that we become people of haqiqah. May Allah bless us to be of those people who gather and talk about how we did our deeds and how we increased our actions for the sake and for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May we be of those people to talk about how we brought joy and cheer to the people around us. 
May we be able to be ta able to talk about all the wonderful things that we've done in this life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen. Oh Allah, you said that we made dua to you, you would answer it. Oh Allah, we're asking today that you answer this dua and the other duas that the others will be making today and tonight and tomorrow and the days ahead. Oh Allah, we ask that you bring ease to all the pains that the brothers and sisters are going through in this country, in my country, and the world, the world around. Mm -hmm. Oh Allah, we ask that you ease the suffering of the Muslims, oh Allah. Mm -hmm. Ease the suffering of the humanity, oh Allah. Mm -hmm. Oh Allah, we ask that you will continue to strengthen us, oh Allah. We ask that you will bless us to be sincere people, oh Allah. Mm -hmm. Bless us with ma'arifah and mushahada, ya Allah. Bless us with sabr, ya Allah. Bless us with tawfiq, fi darain, ya Allah. Bless us with tawfiq, fi darain, ya Allah. Bless us with tawfiq, ya Allah. Bless us with tawfiq, ya Allah. Bless us with increased love for you, increased love for Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Oh Allah, we ask that you would continue to ease our hearts, bring us in the state of tranquility, ya Allah. Bless us with peace, fi dunya wal akhirah. Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Rahman Rahim. Bless us to see you in everything that we do, O oh Allah, so that we are always within your presence, O oh Allah. Open our hearts, the eyes of our hearts, O oh Allah, to see you, Ya Allah. Help us to become stronger Muslims, Ya Allah. Help us to be better servants to you, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Rahman Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala sallina muhsaneen. Wa alhamdulillahi wa rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.